Okay, <clears throat> let's go over chapter 17, immune system and diseases. So immune system, you have two types of immune systems, innate and adaptive. Some summary this table is given here. Innate immune system, adaptive immune system. Innate immune systems are things like physical barriers and internal defenses that we'll go over uh, more in detail. So physical barrier, those are things like skin, hairs, cilia, mucous membrane, mucus and chemical secretions, digestive enzymes in the mouth, stomach acid. These are the physical barriers. And then there are the internal defenses. They include inf inflammation, complement proteins, we'll actually discuss uh, more in the, later, phagocytic cells, and natural killer cells. Okay. And adaptive immune system uses antibodies and humoral uh, immune response and cell-mediated immune response and memory response. These are highly specific, but they take, some long, it, they take more time to develop, mount. And the memory system allows great defenses uh, greater defenses in later encounters with the same pathogens or same invaders. So let's talk about the external and chemical barriers. Human body has a physical, uh, significant physical barriers. Skin, skin has a keratin that resists physical entry into cells and is, is also acidic to prevent uh, germ growth. And other surfaces have mucous membrane that trap the pathogens, especially the upper uh, resp respiratory tract's mucous membrane also has cilia that moves uh, pathogens out of out to the mouth so they can be swallowed. Secre secretions like saliva, mucus, and tear, tears <laughs> have enzymes to break down the cell walls. And the stomach acid kills many germs before they enter the digestive system. And the lower intestine, uh, intestinal system harbor bacteria, archaea, and fungi that benefit the host, but they outcompete dangerous pathogens. And pathogens can enter through the skin damage or collecting on the mucus layer in very large numbers. So, what is innate, uh, in, uh, what internal defenses do we have? Innate immune system responds to internalized. Uh, pathogens with an inflama in, in, inflammatory response. Uh, phagocytosis and natural killer cells and the uh, complement system. White blood cells like macrophage move to injury site and engulf the pathogens, whereas mast cells in mucosal tissue release chemicals in an injury. And cytokines are also released from white blood cells and infected cells when foreign pathogens are detected. And what are cytokines? Cytokines are small proteins that regulate the cell, pro pro cell proliferation, differentiation, and gene expression to produce a variety of immune responses. There are about 40 types of cytokines in human body. And the inter interferons released by the infected cell stimulate uninfected cells to fight the viral replication. And that makes sense because you're infected and you're surrounded by uninfected cells. So interferons will protect the uninfected cells. And this also activates the macrophage and other uh, immune system, immune cells. So in, 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 I don't know why I'm having such a hard time pronouncing inflammatory. <laughs> Cytokines produce inflammation, which causes swelling, redness, heat, and pain resulting from the injury. So that's what's happening here. Here are the cytokines. Now, cytokines also enter the extracellular fluid and cause the capillaries to dilate and tissue to swell. So this is why when you get an injury, your tissue swells up. And WBC leukocytes, white blood cells, are then attracted to the uh, injury site. Neutrophils 
are one of the, one of the earlier white blood cells that engulf invading <clears throat> pathogens. Then, <clears throat> then macrophages will follow the neutrophils and take over and resolve the uh, resulting inflammation. The cytokines also see, send feedback to the central nervous system, resulting in overall feel, feeling of sickness, lethargy, muscle pain, and nausea. So this is why people who have like chronic infections are just very sick. Cytokines also cause fever, uh, inhibiting the growth of path pathogens. This is important for viral infections and, and bacterial infections too. So what are natural killer cells? This is a, a lymphocyte. So a lymphocyte is a white blood cell that contains large nucleus as seen here. Most lymphocytes are in adaptive immune response, but infected cells are identified and destroyed by natural killer cells, which, which are the only lymphocyte in the innate immune system. Um, natural killer cell is a lymphocyte that killed virus infected identified by the altered major histocompatibility complex, MHC1 molecule on the surface. So natural killer cell induces uh, programmed cell death or apoptosis in the target, whereas phagocytic cells uh, digest, engulf and digest the cell debris that's left behind. Uh, cells involved in immune, innate immune response include mast cell, natural killer cell, monocyte, which develops into macrophage, macrophages, and neutrophils. So what is the complement system that I mentioned earlier? They're complementary to innate and uh, adaptive immune system. There are about 20 proteins in complement system that are activated by the infection and destroy the pathogens. And the liver cells and macrophages synthesize inactive forms of complement continuously. They, uh, and these complement proteins bind the surface of germs already bound to, bound with antibodies by the adaptive immune system. And com when complements bind the antibodies, <clears throat> that leads to cascade of uh, recruitment of other complement proteins. So for instance, here's C1 complement protein that binds to the antibody here. And that uh, causes complement components two and four to split into two different parts. And then that becomes the C3 convertase. You know, there was fragments from C2 and C4 form C3 convertase. And then C3 convertase splits into two again, and this repeats, and eventually complement in five, six, seven, eight, and nine will form a complex that will make a hole in the plasma membrane of the invading cell. And that can uh, th that pore can cause the germ to li uh, lice, but it can also allow phagocytic cells to come along and engulf it. So what is adaptive immunity? <clears throat> adaptive immune response takes longer than in, uh, innate. It takes anywhere from days to weeks, but it's very specific to invading pathogen. This occurs to uh, occurs as a result of exposure to the antigen from the germ or through vaccination. This is what we're developing when we uh, get vaccinated. And this response activates when innate immune system cannot contain the infection. There are two types, cell-mediated T cells and humoral response antibodies or from B cells. So T and B cells increase uh, greatly, greatly in number to respond to the invading pathogens. T cells kill directly. B cells release antibodies to bind the sulfurous proteins and which leads to increased phagocytosis and the disruption to the infection. Antibodies also provide long-term memory, allowing rapid response 
to re being reinfected. So lymphocytes, white blood cells, are formed in the red blood marrow, or bone marrow, in the flat bones, pelvic bones, or shoulder bones. B cells remain in the bones to mature. T cells migrate to the thymus to mature. And during the, during the maturation, B and T cells that bind too strongly to the own cells are eliminated. This is what minimizes the attack against our own body. And this occurs in fetal development and continues throughout the uh, adult life. And once matured, they are considered immunocompetent. T cells and B cells migrate to spleen and lymph nodes and remain until infection occurs. B cells are involved in humoral uh, immune response, targeting loose pathogens and the fragments in the blood and the lymph. T cells are involved in cell-mediated immune response, and they target infected cells also. <clears throat> so what is humoral response? B cells produce specific antibodies that circulate throughout the body, and they bind the antigens wherever it, wherever it is encountered. And each B cell only has one kind of antigens on the surface, antigen receptors on the surface, making every single B cell different. But B cells must be sensitized to an antigen. Uh, it has to bind the antigen, combine it with uh, MHC2, then present them both on the T B cell surface. And then B cell will encounter the helper T cells, which is activated by the antigen on the surface of B cells. And then T helper cell binds to antigen MH2 complex, and then they release uh, the cytokines that cause B cell to divide rapidly. And then that B cell becomes plasma or memory cell that can secrete 100 million antibody molecule per hour. Afterwards, T cell then becomes the cytotoxic T cell. T helper cell becomes the cytotoxic T cells. So here's a antigen presenting immune cell. Here's a T cell that com that's coming along and binds with this antigen presenting cell or the B cell. And then it releases the cytokines that causes the cell to uh, uh, this is, I guess this is CD4 T cells. See, in CD4 T cells, T cells make the clone of, clone of themselves, and then it becomes cytotoxic T cell. And uh, B cells clones itself also. And the in the CDA cytotoxic T cell, T, uh, cytotoxic T cell binds to the MHC1 complex on the surface of an infected cell. And then infected cell is destroyed by the cytotoxic T cell. So humoral response antibodies bind key sites on the pathogens, which blocks the receptors that dock and neutralize them and this gets filtered by the spleen and it gets eliminated by a, as a urine or feces. Antibodies that coat the surface of virus or toxic proteins such as diphtheria toxin will prevent them from bind to, binding to their target. And the opsonization where a pathogen is coated with antigen is consumed by macrophage or neutrophil. That scenario is shown here. It's actually a phagocytosis. And complement activation is also involved in humoral response. Antibodies attached to a surface of pathogen cell activates the complement system. And it recruits the complement proteins, just like uh, I talked about, talked about earlier. And the pores are formed on the cell membrane, destroying the cell. So what is then? A cell mediated immunity. Antigen, pre antigen presenting cells, APCs, will engulf and digest the pathogen and present the antigens loaded onto the MHC2 molecule on their surface. 
and this is for the other immune cells to come along and recognize them. Dendritic cells in the skin and the lining of respiratory and digestive tract are also APCs or antigen presenting cells. And these are the ideal location to encounter germs because they're in the constant contact with the outside world. Macrophages also can function as APCs in similar ways. T cells have many functions in cytokine release, activation of B cells, and uh, Ig release and they kill directly the infected cells and they also suppress self-immune response and the um, antigen presenting cell mechanism shown here bacterium antigen gets engulfed broken down and the antigens are present with antigens bound to mhc2 molecules are presented on the macrophage surface and then the helper T cell again comes along and binds to the antigen MHC2 complex, then leads to a release of cytokines and uh, so on. So there are two types of T cells, helper T cells and cytotoxic T cells. There are two types of helper T cells. T, uh, helper T cell one, secretes the cytokine to enhance the macrophage and other T cells. And Th2 or helper T cell two stimulates the B cells to secrete the antibodies. Which, but which response develops depends on the pathogen. And these cells, uh, TC or cytotoxic T cells are key in cell mediated immunity that attack and destroy infected cell. And this is important for the virus infected cells as virus replicates inside the cell and it is insulated <clears throat> from circulating antibodies. And uh, uh, the cytotoxic T cells, TCs, make clones with one set of receptors. One is active, the other is inactive. And this, and this is the cause for the delay in the adaptive immune system versus innate because these cells have to divide and develop. Also, uh, cytotoxic T cells are stimulated by cytokines from uh, helper T cells. And B plasma cells and help, uh, cytotoxic T cells are called the effector cells. They effect the killing of the pathogens and infected host cells and so on. So here's the, here's the helper T cells binding with B cell. And here's the activated helper, helper T cells releasing the cytokines. In response to the cytokines, the T cell clones itself. Here's one T cell clone, second T cell clone. And then B cell clones itself and leads to humoral antibody response. And the other clone becomes the cytotoxic T cells leading to cell mediated immune response. So how does uh, immunological memory work? Adaptive Im immune system has a memory allowing for rapid and big response upon reinfection of the same pathogen. Some of the effector cells, B and T cells, uh, cytotoxic T cells, differentiate into B and T memory cells with same antigen specificities. So the re-exposure causes these memory cells to become effector cells again. And this is what we call secondary immune response. You, we all heard of a rhesus factor. If rhesus negative uh, mother carries a rhesus positive, Rh positive fetus, her second uh, Rh positive pregnancy can be dangerous to the fetus. Why do you think that is? Because Rh minus mother will develop immune response to the rhesus factor and the mother's immune system will attack the fetus. Lymph, we say lymph lymphocytes, lymph nodes, lymph. Lymph is collection of all interstitial fluid. Interstitial fluid is the fluid between each and every cell. And they are, uh, 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 we have lymph nodes that are filled with lymphocytes that purge substances from infecting cells. 
and the lymphocytes then return to central venous, uh, venous blood. And the spleen houses the B and T cells where APCs can communicate with the T cells. APCs, the antigen presenting cells. Antibodies are made and secreted from the uh, spleen. Spleen also filters out substance and antibody bound uh, pathogens. Then there's the mucosal immune system and immune tolerance. Mucosa associated lymphoid tissue. Um, this is the, the first tissue that uh, ingested pathogens are deposited on. So mucosal tissue include things like mouth, pharynx, esophagus, gastrointestinal, respiratory, and urogenital tracts. And the antigen presenting cells in mucosa are primarily dendritic cells detected by T cells of T cells in the mucosa. And the immune tolerance refers to ability to prevent the immune response to harmless substance like self antigens. Uh, regulatory T cells, Treg, call it, they suppress the local inflammation and inhibit the secretion of stimulatory immune factors. And this is what prevents the unwanted immune response and inflammation. Um, viruses, I don't know why they decided to put viruses with the immune systems chapter rather than the microorganism chapter. But since it's here, we'll go over it briefly. There's just, I think that I just have two slides. Viruses are acellular entities and can only be seen with an electron microscope. Their genome either contains DNA or RNA, and they replicate using the replication proteins of the host cell. There are six main stages of replication, attachment, penetration, uncoding, replication, assembly, and then release. There are three relatively complex uh, viruses, the bacteria phage T4, seen here, uh, with a tail fiber, that attaches to the host cell. Tail fibers are here. It's an actually marvelous, incredibly ornate organism, um, entities. Um, and here's the adenovirus showing capsid gly glycoprotein and the capsid. Uh, it and uses a spike, just like uh, SARS CoV 2, um, from its capsid uh, to a host uh, attached to the host. And then there's the HIV retrovirus shown here, which uses glycoprotein to attach. And here's a diagram of influenza virus packaged, packaged into viral envelope, which fuses with the plasma membrane. This way, virus can exit without actually killing it. So here's a exiting strategy shown here. So it just buds off one at a time instead of lysing the entire cell and killing the host cell. Um, viruses cause many variety of diseases in humans, which can be prevented by vaccines. Vaccines can be used prior or during an active viral infection. And the antiviral drugs typically target the enzyme of the virus. So for instance, acyclovir for genital herpes, Tamiflu for influenza, ribavirin for a variety of vi uh, uh, viruses, all target uh, the enzymes of enzyme and the vi viral proteins or viral enzymes. <laughs> and combining of uh, different drugs have been effective in some cases, fusion inhibitors, RT inhibitors, integrase inhibitors, protease inhibitors, this have all been the strategy to treat HIV infection. Okay, I think that's, we'll stop there.